Hello people, in this video we will briefly cover different visuals, uh, visual improvements that we can make to easily uh, make our game look better. So first off, we're gonna add anti-aliasing. As you can see, the edges of the rocks, the edges of the tavern, and the grass, they all look very blocky. It looks blocky. Something feels off. So to fix that, we're gonna go into project settings, anti-aliasing, under the rendering tab, anti-aliasing, and we're going to enable uh, the anti-aliasing. So MSA 2, uh, not 2D, but 3D, we're gonna put it to slow or slowest, whatever, whatever, whatever you like, depending on the quality that you, will, that you want, uh, and choose one of these three. It will smooth, smooth the edges and it will greatly enhance the visuals. Well, now, as you can see, everything is smooth and looks much, much, much better. Then one more very simple thing we can do is enable shadows under the directional light. This way, wow, it looks already better. The shadows are there. And yeah, so everything will now have a shadow. It looks much, much, much better. You can play with the, the settings if you want. Uh, I won't deep. Uh, I won't dive into uh, all the settings because there are way, way, way too much. But you, I highly recommend you to play with them and find what suits you uh, the best. Then into energy, let's just make the energy higher, so it will feel much more brighter. Maybe two, not three. Two feels good. This looks pretty, pretty good. Indirect energy. Let's put it to two. And the volumetric, volumetric fog energy, let's put it to 2. Then we're going to add a world environment node. So this node is responsible for uh, the post-processing effects and lightning uh, and background settings. So we're going to create the new node, create a new environment, select the environment, and then change the background for custom color. And this will be our sky color. So we're gonna put it a nice looking uh, blue, just like that. If we press play now, wow, it already looks much, much, much better. It feels a bit uh, plastic, I would say, but it feels, it looks better. Then uh, we're gonna enable SSAO. So SSAO, I'll show you, will enhance uh, the shadows. So you can see the difference. And as I told you, you can play with all the settings. I won't be playing with them because there's way, way, way too much. But I highly recommend you to play with every single one. Find what you think looks best for your game, what suits you the best. But then we're going to enable SDFGI. This is the dynamic uh, lightning in Godot. So as you can see, there's a bounce feedback there. The color is bouncing. It's simulating uh, lights, light. Uh, it's sometimes a bit weird, but <laughs> it, it makes uh, usually it makes games uh, look better. Uh, we're gonna use occlusion. It's very very important. It's going to fix uh, different um, shadow issues and it's going to enhance uh, the shadows in general. Uh, then we're going to. Enable volumetric fog. Let's put it to 0.01. We're gonna have a, very, a tiny bit of fog, 0.015 maybe. We're gonna have a bit of fog. It will look better, I think. Yeah, it looks good. So now it already looks pretty good, don't you think? Uh, this will this will be uh, the end of this episode. It's a very short episode. But I just wanted to introduce you to the post-processing effects that we can make in Godot. I highly suggest, recommend you to read the documentation and to test it yourself. It will be the best ways to learn how everything works because it takes a lot of time to get used to all the settings that there are. Uh, yeah. So see you in the next episode. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna start adding a sword into our player hands, making our player attack and getting ready to add a, our first enemy. See you then.